On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including a mysterious Chinese space plane leads to questions about their secretive program. Meanwhile, China completes their Tiangong station while dropping another uncontrolled booster back to Earth, and astronomers find a planet with the density of a marshmallow. There's lots to go over this week, so let's get going. This is the Space Race. Did you all know China has a secret space plane? Well, not only does it have an extremely well-guarded secret space plane, but that plane has actually been in orbit around the Earth for over 90 days, and it's just released some kind of an object into space. The mysterious vehicle was launched on a Long March 2F rocket back in August, and hasn't been doing much more than raising its orbit since then. Our knowledge of the plane is only due to a brief announcement by the Chinese government that they had launched their reusable plane and a report from the US Space Force which has been tracking it this whole time. As for the object, the tracking stations are assuming it's a satellite, as it's much smaller than the plane, but again, we have no real data. This could be a test satellite to see how the space plane performs that job, or a monitoring satellite that will take metrics of the space plane itself, like the Banqing satellite launched in 2008 to image the Shenzhou 7. But the really interesting bit is the plane itself. We know almost nothing about it aside from its existence, but it does seem to be part of a larger project by China to develop a reusable space plane possibly to help service their new Tiangong space station and their upcoming telescope projects. The whole thing is being run by the Chinese Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, or CALT, and consists of this space plane and a suborbital twin. We have no idea what the planes look like, but fairing debris showcased at a Chinese middle school in Hunan province gives us some clue. Currently, it's thought that the vehicle could resemble the Boeing X-37B, which is basically America's version of an experimental new space plane vehicle. It's launched a few times between 2010 and 2020. But while the orbital plane is getting all the attention, it's pretty clear China's more excited about its suborbital partner. And we actually know a little more about this plane. Back in 2021, China conducted their first test flight of the system, making a vertical takeoff and landing horizontally. This type of flight is also being used by the Experimental Space Plane Program in America. CALT have described this system as a long-distance, high-speed option to get cargo across the world quickly, or to launch other space planes into low Earth orbit. And we get some slightly vague images of this space transportation system in a statement put out by CALT in September. In the document, we get some little animations showing a large plane ferrying a smaller vehicle into the upper atmosphere, then returning for landing. These plans are very similar to systems we are seeing other agencies playing around with lately, like Virgin Orbit's Launcher 1 or NASA's Toad Glider Air Launch System. So China's interest in developing this tech isn't really surprising. What is surprising is how clandestine this whole development process is. Normally, China is about as quick as any other country to show off their successes. However, it seems like the Chinese space plane program is heavily funded by the military. So maybe it's not so odd that they aren't showcasing their planes yet. Lack of information aside, it is really cool seeing different types of launch systems being developed. Space planes have been a useful way to operate in low Earth orbit since the shuttle program. It's a great way to make a spacecraft reusable that doesn't involve burning chemical rockets for a landing. We've been big fans of space exploration since we were kids. It's deeply fascinating and piques our curiosity, which is why we're excited to share today's sponsor, Brilliant. The best way to learn is by applying lessons interactively, and with Brilliant, you can explore thousands of lessons to help you learn specific skills to be a better thinker. With exclusive content added each month, you'll join over 10 million people that have found a better and more fun way to learn. Skip the lecture videos and textbooks and start solving interactive problems today. Brilliant offers courses for ambitious people of all ages, so you can stress less and learn better. Brilliant is the perfect gift for yourself or someone you know this holiday season. What I love most about Brilliant is the approach to learning. 
Your typical school will teach you to memorize without a lot of practical understanding of how STEM actually works. If you have kids who are struggling with math and science, Brilliant offers the best way to help them learn in a fun and interactive environment. We urge our viewers to stay sharp, continue learning new skills, and always keep an open, curious mind, which is why we love Brilliant so much. You can learn an incredible amount at a fraction of the price you would pay at college. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash the space race or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscriptions, so act fast before they run out to save yourself some money. China entered the final construction phase of their Tiangong space station on November 1st, launching the final module on a heavy lift Long March 5B rocket and losing control of another deorbiting booster in the process. The 17.9 meter long, 23 metric ton Mengxian module is the third and final pressurized section of the Tiangong space station and houses another laboratory, equipment racks inside and outside the module, and a cargo airlock. Now all that's needed is a couple of spacewalks to permanently attach the Mengxian to the main Tianhe core module and the three-person crew can head home, likely later this month. The current crew was flown up in June this year and were specifically there as construction specialists to ensure the completion of the station. But while the completion of the Tiangong is an impressive feat, having only started construction in 2021, China has once again recklessly let the core stage of their Long March 5B rocket fall back to Earth uncontrolled. Some of you might remember back in July when the previous Tiangong module, when CN, was launched. A similar story played out with the Long March's core booster falling uncontrolled back to Earth, breaking apart and scattering over a large area of the South China Sea, with reports of explosions coming in parts of Malaysia. The possibility of hitting a population center during the deorbiting event was admittedly very low, but the point is that there should not have been any possibility. The main problem is that the Long March 5B is designed to use up all of its fuel to get these station modules into orbit. Other agencies have safety planning in place that ensures most rockets that are too big to fully burn up will save a little bit of their fuel to control where they come down. But it's not like China's doing something that other agencies don't. We do see all kinds of space debris impact the ground around the world. Even SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has said that Starship has capability benchmarks that rely on using its full fuel complement. So it is something that everyone at least considers. Regardless, when the next Long March booster fell back to Earth on November 4th, the potential area for debris strikes covered a huge portion of the continental United States and much of Africa. Luckily, the booster splashed down in the Pacific Ocean, but this was a much riskier event. Back in July, when the first Long March booster gained its publicity, almost every other space agency condemned the recklessness of the Chinese launch. And while we agreed, we also pointed out that China wasn't the only group letting debris land wherever it wanted. But there is not a single rocket company or space agency that would be so irresponsible as to endanger two massive inhabited areas like the Chinese agency just did. In response to the potential debris strikes, Airline flights were grounded along the projected path of the booster until it was confirmed as having splashed down into the Pacific. For their part, space agencies and industry leaders have once again criticized the Chinese government, but there isn't any real way to hold them accountable. During a media briefing held on November 2nd, Marlon Sorge, the executive director for the Aerospace Corporation Center for Orbital and Reentry Debris Studies, said that the reality is there aren't any real laws, treaties, internationally that govern what you're allowed to do in terms of re-entry. So there isn't really a direct legal way to control what's going on at an international level. And it's probably a long shot, but maybe we should get some sort of treaty going to stop this from happening? Relatively take the wheel seems like a deorbiting strategy that's going to get someone killed. Astronomers at the Kitt Peak National Observatory in Arizona have made a discovery that is weird. That's not very scientific, we know, but what else do you call a planet about the size of Jupiter with the density of a marshmallow? 
This really light exoplanet was found by combing through the data taken by NASA's TESS survey satellite. TESS looks for exoplanets by watching stars and tracking when their light dims. This is usually an indicator for a planet transiting in between the star and TESS's cameras. From there, it can measure the time it takes for the suspected planet to orbit its star and confirm if it even is a planet and its size. In this instance, the planet is TOI 3757b, and it orbits its red dwarf star so closely that it takes only 3.5 days to complete its year. That's strange enough on its own. Red dwarfs throw off powerful flares that would normally strip a planet of any atmosphere pretty quickly. Our marshmallow giant shouldn't exist. Once it was discovered, though, the research team went to work with some follow-up instruments called Need and Nessie, both of which are designed to more accurately gather velocity and size data. Then, with the help of the Habitable Zone Planet Finder on the Hobby Eberly Telescope and the fine folks over at the Red Boots Observatory, the team calculated the planet's density and mass. It turns out that even though our new gas giant is about the size of Jupiter, its density makes it weigh only a quarter of our own giant, meaning it could float in a bathtub of water, if we could find a big enough tub. So, we have an incredibly light planet with an atmosphere floating within high five distance of its red dwarf sun. How is this planet even possible? Well, the researchers have a few ideas. For one, they believe it's possible that this giant formed more slowly than Jupiter did. Normally, gas giants form around a dense rocky core and pull in planetary gases until they exhaust the local supply. Most gas giants have a core that's about 10 times the mass of Earth. But our marshmallow giant seems to have had some trouble forming that dense of a core, and so it's much lighter. As for how it survives the wrath of its red dwarf star, that might be mostly due to its orbit, which looks a little bit elliptical. This would give the planet some cool-off time while at the extreme distances of its orbit. More study is definitely going to be needed, but this also raises the possibility of other wispy gas giants in other systems just waiting to be found. A marshmallow gas giant. Science fiction has nothing on reality. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.